Okay, we're going to take a look at some basic geometry review number two. You uh, will need a writing instrument and a sheet of paper so that you can try to work a few of the problems yourself. We get started here. Look at this depiction, this graphic, and see what you know about it. Click on the stop sign up here and see if you can figure out the value of x. When you think you've figured it out or you're ready to see it worked out, just click on the go sign and come back and uh, you'll find out how it worked out. All right, let's see how you did. Well, we take a look at this drawing here. I hope that it's kind of obvious to you that uh, it would be like a mirror image right here. So this half over here is just a mirror image of this half over here. In other words, this is at 33 degrees and this angle is at 33 degrees. This line right here means that uh, the length of this line is congruent or equal to the, equal, the length of this line right here. And this line that's right here is a common line between this right triangle and this right triangle. And we know the right triangles because this right here tells us that we're dealing with a right triangle. And so if this is 90 degrees, this is 90 degrees, that's 90 degrees, and that's 90 degrees. And so with all of that being said, we can look here and the length of this hypotenuse to this right triangle here is uh, cleverly hidden in this number. And then we have this other hypotenuse, which is exactly the same length and is cleverly hidden in this different number, which means we need to solve this algebraically. And so if you set it up so that 3x plus 10 is equal to 5x minus 2, it looks something like this. 3x uh, plus 10 equals 5x minus 2. Well, if we add 2 to each side, this negative 2 goes away, and this 10 becomes a 12. And if we subtract 3x from each side, uh, this 5x becomes a positive 2x. And we wind up with 12 equals 2x, dividing both sides by 2. We come up with x equals 12, which satisfies the original question, what is the value of x? We'll take a look now at number 2. It's exactly the same drawing. It doesn't have anything to do with uh, new drawings. It's exactly the same, so you use what information that you knew in the, the last one on this one. Click on the stop sign and see if you can calculate the length of the hypotenuse here. Okay, let's see how you did. Well, we know from the last one that x equals 6, and so we just plug in uh, an x, and we wind up with uh, 3x plus 10, or 3 times 6 plus 10 is 28. And 5 times 6 minus 2 is also 28. So 28 does equal 28. Number 3, it's the same drawing, and we're asked to find the unknown length here. And uh, this is also called the adjacent to the 33rd uh, degree angle right here. So click on the stop sign and see if you can correctly come up with this length. All right, let's see how you did. Perhaps you recognize that what you're really dealing with here is just a right triangle. You know the length of the hypotenuse. It's 28. We calculated that earlier. And you know that this is 15.279 uh, feet. That little mark there means feet. So what we're dealing with here really here is just a right triangle. All I've done is just flip this over so it might be easier for you to see. And if we take 15.3, uh, I rounded uh, 0.279 feet to 15.3. And if I square that, then throw it under a square root sign, that gives me the length of this leg of the right triangle right here as being the square root of 234. And if I square 28, and then put it under a square root sign. The length of the hypotenuse here is 28, but it's also, it also can be rewritten as the square root of 784. Using our little uh, generator here for the 3, 4, 5 triangle, I know that if I know the length of the hypotenuse, 5 in this case, I can rewrite that as 25, the number 25 minus the number 9 gives me the other number that under a square root sign is the length of the side. So we'll take a look at this here. 28 squared is 784 minus 15.3 squared, which is uh, 234. Subtract 234 from 784, and I wind up with 550. Throwing that uh, under a square root sign, 
then I wind up with the square root of 550 is 23.45, correct to two decimal places. And that answer makes sense. The longest line in the right triangle is a in the hypotenuse uh, is the hypotenuse, and it is in this case 28. Uh, this other leg over here is 15.3, and so this leg right here is 23.45. That makes sense that uh, it would be about that length. So our answer makes sense. So the original question, we'll go back and read that. What is the length of this unknown leg right here, the adjacent to the 33 degrees? And it's uh, approximately 23.45 units, or that's what it is correct, to two decimal places. All right, number four, click on the stop sign and see if you can solve for the value of x. All right, let's see how you did. Uh, line MP, we have line MP, this red line here, is a bisector, angle bisector, of triangle NMO. And we know that line NP is, has the ugly, nasty value of uh, 4x minus 2, and the line PO has the value of 18. So this length right here is equal to this length right here because this is the angle bisector, and we know that 4x minus 2 is equal to 18. Finding the value of x, we have 4x minus 2 equals 18. We add 2 to each side, so we wind up with 4x equals 20. Divide both sides by 4, and we wind up with x equals 5, which satisfies the original question. Always go back and read the original question to make sure that you're actually answering the question that's being asked. And in this case, we are x equals 5. All right, number 5. Read the problem, click on the stop sign, and see if you can actually solve the problem. Okay, well, let's give it a whirl. Uh, see how you did. Well, it says that we have line NP. That's line NP is right here, and we already know that that's equal to 18, and we know that our hypotenuse right here is equal to 44. What we don't know, and it's asking us, is what's the length of this red line right here MP, the angle bisector, which makes a 90 degree angle right here. So we know this is 44 and that's 18. Uh, so let's crank that around a little bit here. I can rewrite 18 as the square root of 324, and I can rewrite 44 as the square root of 1936. Subtracting 324, the number 324, from the number 1936, I get 1612. Throw that under the, the radical, and I wind up with having uh, approximately 40.15 is the length of this uh, angle bisector. And let's see, uh, that makes sense. If the hypotenuse is 44 and this length is 18, the other leg to be less than 44, uh, it seems to make sense at 40.15 correct to two decimal places. Of course, the perfect answer is 1612, the square root of. All right, number six, read the question, click on the stop sign, and try to work it out. All right, we're being asked, we said we have line MP is the angle bisector of the triangle. Line NP is 4x minus 2, and line PO is 18. What is the altitude of triangle NMO? Hmm. Altitude. That's this red line right here. That's the same thing as the angle bisector. It turns out that we already know that because we already calculated that as 40.15 uh, units. So what happens is you had to know that the altitude and the angle bisector in this case would be the same thing. Number seven, click on the stop sign and see if you can solve the problem. Okay, let's see how you did. Well, let's see. Uh, if you take a look at this, you might immediately recognize that the left half is just a mirror image of the right half. And if that's the case, then that means angle A is equal to angle B. 
and we know that angle A is 5x minus 5, and that by itself is absolutely useless information. We don't have the super secret decoder that goes with it. However, if we take the knowledge that angle A is equal to angle B, then we know that 5x minus 5 is exactly equal to 6x minus 14. And so we crank those numbers out. 5x minus 5 equals 6x minus 14. We add 14 to each side, giving us 9 on one side, and subtract 5x from each side, and we wind up with x equals 9 or 9 equals x. That is not the correct answer, but it is on the way to finding the correct answer because the question asks us, what's the measure of angle A plus B? Well, in order to find A, we simply plug in the number. 5 times 9 minus 5 is 40. And B is a mirror image of that, so it is also 40. And we plug in the number. 6 times 9 minus 14 equals 40. 40 does equal 40. 40 is not the right answer. The question was, go back and read the original question, what is the angle measure of A plus B? That is, what is 40 plus 40? And the answer is 80 degrees. What is the measure of angle D? Remember, A was 40. All right, let's see how you did. And that would be, we know that the internal angles of all triangles in the known universe and beyond uh, total to 180 degrees. So we know this is 90, we know this is 40. The only thing missing is 50 degrees because 90 plus 40 plus 50 is 180 degrees. Number nine, we have an isosceles triangle, ABC, has a base unit of 44 units long. Line DE is parallel to the base and extends from the midpoint of lines AB and AC. How long is DE? Click on the stop sign and kind of hammer on this and see if you can come up with the right answer. Okay, let's see how you did. There are a number of ways that we can try to solve this problem and that would be first of all you might recognize that since this line right here DE is at the midpoint of this line the length of AE is exactly equal to the length of EC or that means that AC excuse me AE its length is exactly one half of the length of AC in other words uh, this smaller triangle right here is proportional to the larger triangle by a factor of one half, or the uh, larger triangle is twice the size of the smaller triangle. And if that's the case, if this is 44, this line right here has to be 22. We can take a look at it uh, other ways, and that would be, let's draw some uh, angle bisectors that come here. So if I drop an angle bisector down the middle of this isosceles triangle, I split it in half, making a right triangle and a right triangle. The distance, uh, this total distance here being 44, is now 22. Since this line connects at the midpoint, uh, since the line DE connects at the midpoint of BA, if I drop a line that is perpendicular to my base, I have bisected this line in half right here. And so this is 11, 11, 11, and 11. Because 11 plus 11 plus 11 is equal to 44. If this line is 11, then this line is 11. If this line is 11, then this line is 11. 11 plus 11 is 22. There are other multiple ways of solving this. However, I'll move on. What is the value of A? In other words, if the length here is 10, what's the length of A and what's the length of B? Click on the stop sign. Okay, let's see how you did. Well, turns out, uh, perhaps you recognize that what I really have here is this is a right triangle and this is a right triangle. One leg of the right triangle is uh, equal to the length of the other leg. And both right triangles have the same length of the leg here. That means that the hypotenuse A and the hypotenuse B have to be exactly the same. And if that's the case, here I have a right triangle and here I have a right triangle. The length of this leg right here is exactly equal to the length of this leg right here. And the length of the common leg is the same. Therefore, 
the hypotenuse must be exactly the same length in both right triangles. So if this is 10, then A is 10, and B is 10 as well, because we're dealing with a right triangle and a right triangle. The length of this leg is equal to the length of that leg, and the common leg is, is the same length for all. You can take a look at uh, that in a, perhaps a, a drawing. If we circumscribe this all in, inside a, a circle, the, this length right here happens to be nothing more than the radius of the circle. This is the radius of the circle, and that is the radius of the circle. And so if we draw a point where the radius exits the circle, crosses the circumference of the circle, to the other point where the radius crosses, that line right here is called a chord. And then here we have a chord. It's A chord, C-O-R-D. And then here we have a chord uh, likewise, making a perpendicular at the midpoint of that chord passes back through the center of the circle, making a perpendicular at the midpoint of this chord passes it back through the center of the circle, and making a perpendicular at this point passes it back through the center of the circle. All right, your comments, questions, and suggestions are welcome, encouraged, and always appreciated. You may write to me at alanmorris at yahoo.com.